Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we need to fix these wiring gremlins. Stay tuned. Hi guys, I'm having some electrical issues, so I'm gonna dive into it. Probably won't record most of it because I want this video to be a driving video. So, I'm just gonna put my head down and try to get this wiring figured out. All right guys, so I got into the car looking at the engine electrical system. But, all right, let's start from the basics. Power to the ECU. So power, went and de-pinned it, and uh, checked it on the multimeter. Got 0 0.05 volts. I'm like, hmm. So I traced it back to the power source. Fuse number 11. I'm like, hang on, FB, that's fuse box. That's one in the car. Went to the car, pulled it out. It was blown blown fuse guys <laughs> couldn't find a 15 amp to put in there so I put a 10 in there being safe put the ignition on the car ABS went away so I haven't started it since then but yeah blown fuse after all of that so I'm going to get it started and just drive back and forth and see if it it changes. Fingers crossed it does. Alright guys, before I started it, I just wanted to make sure that I could connect to the OBD and I am connected. Which is awesome. Your fault codes. Probably a lot. Things aren't good. <laughs> I might look all them up. Alright guys, before I start it up and back it out, I'm going to get on the laptop and connect to the OBD port and look at these and see if I can turn them off, see what they are. And, um, so my check engine light doesn't keep coming up. Um, yeah, because I think if I do get pulled over and I see a check engine light, they will start to look over the car. Um, but this is a stock. Naturally aspirated, limited Forester. That's all it is. See that grill? See the bonnet? Yeah. Stock. Alright guys, so I just went into ECU flash on the laptop to the stock ECU. Um, found all the codes. So MAP, TPS, coolant temp sensor, intake air temp, MAP, and TGVs. And we all know, if you've watched my videos, they're not connected anymore. So I went and disabled all of them. And put my little green connector switch on. And we cleared it. So reflashed stock ECU to have all of them removed. And uh, yeah, we, we should have a good start, hopefully. Alright guys, so first start up. It was only a few seconds. We got another check engine light because it started. So we have a lot more codes coming up. So we'll have a look at them right there. And um, we're going to ECU flash, delete them again. And we did have the power light flashing. So something's wrong with the transmission. Uh, we've got to figure that out. Maybe it's low on fluid. I'll have a, have a look. All right, so I just drove it back and forward and it was good, except the idle was very, very low. We need to fix that. Also, the power light was still flashing. I checked the, the fluid level, it was fine. Uh, we gotta find out what's going on there. So I'll have a look at the wiring again, see if it needs something, that's why it's freaking out a bit. Alright guys, I found out why the power light was flashing, because the green wire down there for the taco is not connected to the ECU. However, I connected it, and then I don't get any RPM, but the light's gone. 
if I disconnect it and have the Haltech DPO on there, I get the sweep and I get RPM. Not sure about speed yet because I haven't driven it, but um, yeah, so that's giving it a signal. I think the TCU takes the signal from that wire, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's for like kick downs, changing gears, and stuff like that, but. If everything else is working, like if it shifts fine and everything doing it manual, I'm happy to drive manual in the auto because that's how I normally drive anyway. Um, just so I could hold it in the gear. But we won't find out until we get out and go for a drive, so. <laughs> it's getting close. Um, there's a lot to do this week, guys. <laughs> There's a lot to do. I need to finish off my gauge pod. Um, that's not too too bad. I need to hook up my boosts. I'm just going to power to them. I need to go get some fuel. This is some old fuel in this too. Um, so what I'm going to do now is actually have a look at why it's idling so low. I like to bring it up. It runs a bit smoother. At 950. Alright guys, it's about 12.30 now. So I'm gonna head inside and go to bed. Come out tomorrow and take it for a drive. So we'll just go up and down the street. I'm not gonna be getting into boost. So what I need to do is actually hook up my boost gauges. I can see where they're at. Hopefully we can burn off some of this smoke or oil or something that I've got going on in the turbos and actually have a, a clean running car. I do have the cat in there now, so it should be okay. A lot of condensation built up from start, stop, start, stop. Not running it for long, so. Alright guys, it's the next day. I'm actually <laughs> a bit nervous. Um, I need to hook up both the boost gauges and then warm her up and uh take it out for a first drive i'm peeking <laughs> all right so i've got the gauges in uh, i've got the laptop in i guess we're ready to warm her up make sure she's good at temp check the smoking there might be stuff that's just still in there being burnt off so it was a bit oily when I was doing the painting and stuff like that. So might just need to burn off, get up to temp a couple of times. Fingers crossed it is. Um, see how smoky it is out the back. And if it's good, we'll go for a drive. If it's not, we've got to figure it out. Because I can't be driving around during the day with it smoky. Because I will get pulled over. And I'll see this. Alright guys, it's been a while since you've been up there. Um, going to let it warm up and get it outside i've got vehicle speed there too so i'm just going to go up and down the driveway just to see if i can get a vehicle speed reading and then we'll go from there all right so at the moment i'm just going into um coolant temperature ignition correction and i'm adding some timing to bring the rpm up it was very low we added 9 degrees and it's brought it up to 900. So hopefully the idle's going back down again. It's going to back it out. Hopefully end up smoking up the place. Seems alright. So I've got my overall and this is the G235 to boost. Alright. Let's uh, see how it goes in gear. Reverse. No throttle. If 
feels good. It's it's timing. All right, we're getting pretty smoky. Right, I stopped up big time before. Um, ignition, basic ignition. Um, I was just comparing it to the WRX, and I put everything in the same, but I forgot to change this up to manifold pressure. It's still on ignition, so I was out. As soon as I changed that, free revs a lot better, and nowhere near as smoky. Smoky yet. Hi <laughs> right, guys. Um, do I go for a drive? Yeah, I'll just go down my street and back. Hopefully. Alright, I'm gonna make sure that we can get a Vehicle speed sensor. Or vehicle speed. Mm -hmm. Still don't know how it's going in gear. It's, it's gone in six months. I'm getting vehicle speed. Alright guys, it's about 16 now. It's dark. So, let's go take it for a drive. And, uh, See how we go. I'm not going to record driving. Uh, I'll just record if something happens. So I'll just go probably down my street and back and yeah. See how we go. Alright, first drive. It's smoky. Uh, I've probably got one psi. But man, <laughs> those turbos sound mint together I did a little video I don't know if you could hear it I'll have a listen but yeah very smoky better check under the bonnet all right it's Monday taking it for the first drive and I think I've got to get it back in and pull it apart this coolant line here it's got some coolant on it um, there's a lot of heat under this bonnet. Um, sweet. You can see where things are leaking now because of that oil, uh, the alloy paint. Yeah. Might have to run a, a sealant on that Tito 5. Yeah, I don't think the the flange that I've built my little octopus exhaust on um, isn't flat. I think that's why it's leaking. Pretty sure. Pretty sure I've warped it because I've welded on that piece three or four times now. And also, I scraped my mounts for my intercooler on my driveway coming out actually it probably wasn't the mounts it was probably the bolts I'll have a look also I did a log alright guys just been playing around on the computer looking at the log that I did and uh, my vehicle speed sensor was way out it said I got up to like 120 <laughs> well I clearly didn't I was putting around probably 40 k's Maybe maximum 50. So, I just downloaded a GPS speedo on my phone. I'll have that in the car. When I see it at 20 kilometers, 
because that's where I got it set at on the laptop. We'll just do calibrate and it should do it. So I'll just look on the GPS, look on the laptop, make sure they're synced at different speeds and we should be good because I do have uh, vehicle speed in some of my tables so I've got to make sure that's right as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the oil feed off and swap it around so I've got the banjo on the top because um, I've got a banjo with the restrictor so might be able to do that and uh, yeah when that's all off I'll seal around the back there hopefully that'll get rid of this smoking issue because it was actually getting pretty bad when I was out there uh, luckily, luckily it was dark um, yeah quite a bit to do it's getting late now on Monday it's 10 to 11 um, I might start pulling it apart I think it might still be warm it's not too bad um, yeah some late nights coming up this week to get this ready alright guys it's been night so what five days to go just got the gasket off look at that oil that's crazy never seen it like that before all right just got the oil feed off and this bolt no restrictor so uh let's um see if i can change that all right so with all of my fittings i couldn't find a restrictor for the td05 so I'm going to have to either get a restrictor pill or get a banjo bolt and use one of the originals that has the restrictor in it. Um, by the looks of it, something has been dripping onto the td 5 running around the back side. We look over here, it's built some coolant. A little bit went down the oil drain. You can see it's on the back here. So it must be coming from the GT35. Here it is. See there's a bit of wetness there. Hmm. Hmm. Who wants to buy me a Garrett GT35? Please? Alright guys, it's the next day and I'm actually going to finish this episode here. I've pretty much done my gauge pod there. Decided I'm going to get another banjo fitting. Because I've already got the bolt with the restrictor. That was the factory one, which I don't know why I didn't use. But anyway, we'll get this all back together tonight with some sealant. So obviously can't start it tonight. So I'll do some more cosmetic stuff, like cleaning up this, painting that, the brackets there. We'll get the gauge put in tonight. So that'll be next episode. And this being a Thursday upload, um, that'll be the Saturday upload. So pretty much everything to get it ready for Sakura Picnic. And... Mondays should be secure picnic. So fingers crossed we can get there. This should fix the smoking issue, having the restrictor in there. Um, I don't, it just didn't cross my mind. It just slipped my mind. So uh, yeah, we'll get that fixed. Hopefully that fixes the issue and we can start tuning it. Um, cool, enjoy this episode. Keep watching up here, and I'll catch you next episode. Bye.